everybody. Today we're going to talk about Sylvia Likens. Um, it's a very hard subject, so just so you guys know, it's going to get very graphic very quick, and there's going to be pretty graphic images and stuff, so be warned. And it's going to be a long video. It's probably going to be a couple of parts, but there's a lot of stuff that has happened in this case, so we'll go with the first fact. Celia was the third of five children. Okay, go. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> she was born to carnival workers, Lester Cecil Likens, 1926 to 2013, and his wife, Elizabeth C. Was that Betty? Oh, because they called her Betty. Uh, Francis, 1927 to 1998. Number three. She was born between two sets of fraternal twins, Diana and Danielle, and two years older, and Jenny and Benny, one year younger. Number four. Jenny had polio, which made one of her legs weaker than the other. Causing a limp, she had to wear a steel brace. Mm -hmm. My grandpa had that, but his legs were smaller than the other. Mm. Five. Parents' marriage was unstable. They sold candy, beer, and soda at carnival stands around Indiana in the summer, always moving and very poor. Go. Number six. The sons always traveled with the parents. Just to help them out. Number seven. The parents preferred to have Sylvia and Jenny to stay with the relatives often, the grandmother, due to safety and education concerns. So it wouldn't be very safe for a couple of teenagers to be around a bunch of carnival workers. Yeah. Uh, number eight. Teenage Sylvia sometimes earns money by babysitting and running errands or performing ironing chores for friends and neighbors. Number nine, Sylvia would give her, her mom some of the money she earned. Number ten, she was friendly, confident, and lively. Light brown hair, oh, with light brown hair. Eleven. Her nickname around her friends was Cookie. Number twelve. She didn't show her teeth when smiling. She had lost a front tooth in a collision with her brother. Dinky? What does it say? During. Oh, during. It does not look like during. Should we start early? No. During a kid's game. Oh, it's my turn. <laughs> yeah. She loved the Beatles. <laughs> so. Number 14. She used to take Jenny to the skating rink where she would fasten a roller skate to her strong leg and would lead her around the rink. Alright, number 15. We're going into the lady herself. Sylvia and Jenny and Gertrude are like the main characters of the story. Number 15. Born in Indianapolis, Indiana, to Molly and Myrtle and Hugh Vargas, Van Fossen Sr. She was the third of six kids and working class. 17. October 5th, 1939, she saw her 50-year-old father die of a heart attack. Number 18. Six years later, she jumped out of high school, dropped out of high school, <laughs> to marry John Stephen Benazuski, 1926 to 2007. Number 19. She was 16, he was only 18. Or she was only 16, he was 18. Number 20. They had four children. Okay, number 21. John had a bad temper and would beat her at all at times, at all times.
Either way. <laughs> 22. Number 22. They would stay together 10 years before their first divorce. First divorce. Yes. Number 23. She then married Edward Guthy. <laughs> Uh, number 24, their second marriage lasted three months. <laughs> three months. That was worse. That's bullshit. <laughs> Why did you get married again if you're only in divorce after three months? <laughs> then John and her remarried. That's the first husband. She went yeah. back to his bitch ass. She divorced Edward after three months and went back to her first husband. The beater. Ben Esquaski. The beater. <laughs> Number 26. The worst part is they had two more kids. How much does that make now? I think it's eight. That's six. They had six kids. They had, well, they, yeah, I think that's six kids. Either way, six kids, too many. Yeah, they had four kids, and then they got divorced, and she married a dickhead, and then divorced dickhead, got back together with asshole, and had two more brats. <laughs> Number 27, guess what? This is the second time divorcing in 1963. Shit. Let go. Number 28, she started a relationship with a 22-year-old named Dennis Lee Wright. 22. Okay. Number 29, Dennis was abusive as well. Of course. I mean, I've been abused, but... Number 30. She had one child with Dennis. That makes seven, y'all. Seven kids. Yeah. 31. Right after his son was born, he abandoned them. Abandoned them, I guess. Speak. What a winner. What? 32 bits. 1965, she lived alone to care for seven children. Hear that? Seven children. She's a single mommy. After giving birth to all seven of her kids, all of her husbands have left her with seven kids. In case you wanted to hear the whole list of wonderful children this great devilish woman gave birth to. One, Paula, and at the time of the incident, she was 17. Steph Stephanie, she was 15 at the time of the incident. John, who was 12, Mary, that was 11, Shirley, 10, James, 8, and Dennis Lee Wright, Jr., was only a year old. Number 34. She was small at 36 and 5'6 uh, and 100 pounds. I'm 5'3, 200 odd pounds. <laughs> Even when I was 124 pounds, I was still too skinny. That's anorexic is what that is. That's too Yeah, that's gross. 35. Alright, she was an asthmatic, chain smoker, suffering from depression due to three failed marriages and failed relationship, as well as a miscarriage. Which is a perfect excuse to abuse your put somebody in your care. Or I don't know, actually care for them like they pay you to do. Your turn, babe. Number 36. Number 36. She didn't have a steady job and relied on checks from ex-husbands and odd jobs. She was odd. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Mm. Next chapter. Number 37. Sylvia's mother arrested for shoplifting July 3rd. Don't worry, we're getting into the meat of things. Number 38. Her father arranges for her and Jenny to stay with Gertrude and her family off oh, and on. Oh, of eight. Oh, yeah, okay. That's what it is. Never mind. Her family of eight. Number 39. The sisters knew two of her daughters from Arsenal Technical High School, Paula and Stephanie. Do you remember Paula is 17 and Stephanie is 15? Number 40. Gertrude promised Lester to care for the girls like they were her own. Yeah, I'm well, guessing that's why she beat them. I'm going to figure out how well did she take care of her kids before they came out of the picture. Who was the punching bag then? Because you know that's, that's usually 
Not when it just starts. It usually starts with in the house. So. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like she, that's why she beat them because she was just oh, already doing that to her own kids. So which ones did she torture beforehand? And we're on the 4th, the sisters moved in. It's the 4th of July. Number 42. They made a deal to pay Gertrude boarding fees of $20 a week to care for them. Only $20 a week. Back then, though, that's pretty yeah. good. That's true. That's true. 43. Plan to get the sisters in November of 65. So the parents plan to only let them stay until November of 65. So only a few months. Number 44. At first there was hardly any discipline or even abuse. 45. Stop. <laughs> Lester's payments begin to arrive late by one or two days. Which totally means you can freak out. You know, it's not the post office being behind or they just didn't make the money that month, but you know. I'm going to be a twat anyway. <laughs> Number 46. She began to vent on the sisters by beating their bare butts with different instruments, such as a quarter-inch thick paddle. Ooh. Ooh, that sounds bad. Right? How much is a quarter-inch? Like, uh... Isn't that a half an inch? Maybe know. a little bit smaller. Like a quarter of an inch would be half... It would be less than... Yeah. It would be less than a half an inch. No, really? Maybe a Number 47, she would say things like, well, I took care of you, two little bitches, for a week for nothing. Not their fault, their parents were late. <laughs> Number 48, in August they were beaten about 15 times with paddles. Ooh. Well, if August, there's only four months, four weeks in a month, so that's a little excessive. It's like three times a week. <laughs> Four on some weeks. Just. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, 49. They were beaten. Oh, wait. 15 times because Paula accused them of eating too much food at a lunch supper. Number 50. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Mid August 1965, Gertrude started to force her abuse on Sylvia. Most. Oh, most likely due to jealousy of her beauty and youth. Uh, Trust me, Gertrude was not a looker. <laughs> You're going to show a picture of her? Oh, yeah. She looks like a witch. 51. Started as beatings and being refused food, eventually leading to leftovers or spoiled food out of the garbage. Imagine why they ate more at the church thing than... They should have. Number 52. She even accused them of stealing candy. Candy. Say the candy, you candy monster. I'm so upset. <laughs> After finding out she had a boyfriend, she asked what all they had done, and Stephanie and Jerry, Jenny, mentioned she once laid under the covers with him. Okay, I've laid under covers with multiple different people and nothing ever happened. Boys and girls. 54. Number 54. Gertrude told Sylvia she was getting big in the stomach and it looked like she was having a baby. <laughs> By the way, she's still a virgin. She oh, dies yeah. a virgin, just so you know. Oh, yeah. 55. After saying that, she kicked Sylvia in the genitals. Paula then joined knocking Sylvia off the chair and on the kitchen floor, saying, You ain't fit to sit in a chair. Uh, okay. Stupid bitches. <laughs> Sorry, I was yawning. Uh, number 56. On another occasion, as the family ate dinner, Gudrud, Paula, and a neighborhood boy, Randy Gordon Lepper? Force fed Sylvia a hot dog overloaded with condiments, including mustard, ketchup, and spices, causing her to throw up later, forced to eat her vomit. Causing her to throw up. Mm -hmm. And then they made her eat, eat her vomit. Her vomit. <laughs> That's disgusting. 
By the way, she doesn't really read my scripts when I write them before I write them, so... <laughs> what? I'm just saying, because you, like, your, your reaction is, like, genuine. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and also, you don't put commas in the proper places, so... Sometimes I read it as a run-on. <sighs> Some people still understand my art. 57. Sylvia's only retaliation was she spread a rumor in school that Stephanie and Paula were prostitutes because they had spread the same rumor about herself. <laughs> Do you know if you would have played on your phone? I can't see the board. It's 58. 58. <laughs> Stephanie then punched her, they cried, and apologized. So there's some remorse. Actually, Stephanie's not too bad of a person, really, in the end. It's Paula, Gertrude, and a few other people there are the bad ones. Right. 59. Stephanie's boyfriend, Coy Hubbard, I don't know who names his son Coy, C-O-Y. He couldn't no, say Corey. <laughs> no, it was a common name back then. Anyway, he was 15 years old, heard the rumor, and attacked Sylvia, slapping, banging her head on the wall, and flipping her backwards onto the floor. Which is totally what you do to a woman, you piece right. of shit. Absolutely. Number 60. When Gertrude found out she used the paddle to beat the crap out of Sylvia. Okay, the crap was mine. We're improvising today. Of course. 61. <laughs> One time Paula beat Sylvia on the face with such force she broke her own wrist among... What? Yeah. Aiming for the teeth in her eyes. Ooh. Of course, because she was beautiful. So why not aim for the pretty parts of her? Number... 62. 60. Yeah? 60. 62. Paula then used her cast to later beat her more! Number 63. I'm not cutting her. She's going to cut my hair tonight. She's lying. Gertrude accused Sylvia constantly of being a prostitute and giving her lectures even though still a virgin. Number 64. Her sister Jenny was forced to either beat Sylvia or be beat herself. Remember, Jenny's got one good leg. She's got polio. <laughs> she had to. She walked around with braces on crutches. Can you imagine me put in that position? I'm already in pain, but if I don't beat my sister, I'm going to be in more pain. You know, um, all she does is beat her and apologize. I'm sorry. Yeah, I guess don't... I'm going to have to beat my sister. <laughs> Number 65, Coy Hubbard and other classmates would visit Gertrude's home to both physically and verbally torment Sylvia, often with her kids and Gertrude herself, along with the neighbor kids. 66. Oh, it's dark. Uh, number 66, some kids used her... As a practice dummy in violent judo sessions. Mm. That practice sounds like fun. Dummy. In other words, they probably didn't hold back. That sounds like fun. Not. Can I be somebody's practice dummy? Sure. It'll be so much fun. Come here. Not. Come here, I'll show you. <laughs> 67. Other injuries, cutting her body, burning her skin with lit cigarettes a hundred time, plus times, and severely injuring her genitals. Have I told you lately how much I hate people? Every day, baby. It's very hard. Warning, graphic content. <laughs> Number 68. Gertrude and the teens force Sylvia to strip naked in the living room and insert an empty Coke bottle into her own vagina in their presence. Gertrude stating to her to prove to Jenny what kind of girl you are? I don't know if you remember the Coke, the Coke, uh, glass Coke bottles. It's... Squeeze too tight, that fucker breaks, and you're in the hospital for the next three days. At least. If you're not dead. 69. Gertrude starts to forbid the s Sylvia from going to school after she confessed to stealing a, stealing a gym suit from the school when she refused to buy the buy her the gym clothes. We all need gym clothes for especially high school. Mm -hmm. Number 70. For this act of theft, 
She whipped her with a three inch wide police belt. Oh, yeah. That's thick. I have to say it goes to prison. All right, so number 71. Her conversation then switched to the evils of premarital sex before repeatedly kicking lichens in the genitals. Again. Number 72. Stephanie came to her defense, stating she didn't do anything. Like I said, Stephanie's not that bad of a person. 73. Gertrude then burned Lycan's fingertips with matches before whipping her more. This is all, by the way, still because she stole gym clothes. Ready? 74. Days later, Gertrude whipped Jenny with the belt after being told she stole a single tennis shoe from school to wear on her strong leg. You buy me new shoes. <sighs> 75. Jenny and the other teens involved wouldn't tell adults because they were scared of what Gertrude would do to them. Especially back then, the authorities didn't really do much. Uh, well, they, things like that weren't talked about. Yeah. It's just not something you talked about. Oh, it's my show here? Uh, number 76. July to August, Lester and Elizabeth Likens would every so often return to Indianapolis to visit the girls when their schedules allowed. 77. Last occurrence her parents visited, the girls was in late August. Neither girls showed any visible signs of distress about mistreatment. Of course, they're not going to show you any distress. <laughs> Number 78. The girls were never left alone with their parents. Gertrude or somebody was always watching. Number 79. Night after the visit, Gertrude asked Sylvia, What are you going to do now, Sylvia? Now they're gone. You know, like, now what are you going to do? They're gone. Number 80. In September, Diana Schumacher, their older sister, ran into them in a local park. They told her of the abuse, but they didn't tell her their address, and the thought... They didn't show, tell her the address. Yeah. Like, and the thought they, you know, when she thought, they were exaggerating. Mm -hmm. they were, she was exaggerating the lack of care. Mm -hmm. 81. Weeks later, the same park that they saw Diana again, while with 11-year-old Marie Bez Benesquowski. Uh, number 82, when Sylvia mentioned she was hungry at the park to her sister Diana, Sylvia was given a sandwich. Just to make her look good, yeah. Number 83. Marie informed this fact in late September to her family. Of course. Because you know, you gotta tell Mother Dear. 84. Gertrude accused Sylvia of gluttony. <laughs> gluttony for wanting a sandwich when you're hungry. That makes sense. In turn, oh, 85. In turn, Gertrude and Paula choked and bludgeoned her. The pair then subjected her to scalding bath to cleanse her of her fucking sin. Are you kidding me? I say boiling, boiling hot, like hot you can get. Bath. Why do people always use that as an, as an excuse? It just pisses me off. Mm -hmm. While Gertrude grabbed her hair and hit her head against the bath to revive her when she fainted. You know, from the scalding hot water burning her skin. Number 88, a neighbor boy named Michael John Monroe, oh, his father, then called the school to tell them where the girl with the sore? Sore. Sore lives.
89. She had not gone to school for many days, so a school nurse came to visit the house. You would think that'd be Enough. helpful, but... 90. Number 90. Gertrude told the nurse that Likens had run away a week ago. Uh-huh. She's I not, told that. She's not tied up to your basement, abused at all. Kicker. Oh, 91. School made no other investigations in her welfare. Number 92. Raymond and Phyllis Vermillion uh, saw Paula abusing Sylvia from next door and did absolutely nothing, just like everybody else. Yeah, they saw Paula beating her. They saw Gertrude beating her. Nothing was done. And apparently somebody's getting in trouble with the cops outside. And like my fiance mentioned, we are over halfway, so this will probably be where we end the first half of the video. Woo! We'll be part two out. This is a long one, as I said, but it's worth starting it. to get dark. It's worth it. So now we're at 93. 93. October 1st, Diana finally found out where they were staying. She visited the property. But of course, you know, that doesn't matter. 